Recently, my wife and I had a chance to go to Europe for two weeks. We visited a number of places, but one of the little towns I wanted to visit is right smack in the middle of Switzerland. If you drew a line from Luzerne to Bern, followed that straight line, right in the middle you would find a little town called Trub, T-R-U-B. I wanted to go there. It's in a picturesque valley. The meadows, the mountains, the hills, the trees, absolutely green, just incredibly beautiful. But this town is a very small town. Maybe, I want to guess 50 people live in the little town and maybe 150 in the outlying areas. And in this town, there's a little church. It's a reformed church. And I learned about it through my family because my family's heritage is through this little town in Trube, Switzerland. Vicki and I made our way up through the valley to this little town, turned off the main road, and there it was. I had seen it in pictures and I had heard about it, but we met the pastor there, Pastor Felix, looked all around, went through the cemetery, which was fascinating for me, and the reason I went was because in this little town, the Habecker family first was recorded. It was listed, or spelled Hab Habegger, H-A-B-E-G-G-E-R, and it was changed later when the family moved to France and then to the United States. But there's something unique about this little town and my family's heritage. You see, in 1692, three Habegger brothers gave an organ to this church. That organ is still there. It plays magnificently. The pastor played it while we were there for us. So 326 years ago, three Habecker brothers and my family gave this organ, and for 326 years now, it has rung out the gospel through music in that church and through that community. It made me think of the text that I'm familiar with, Psalm 78, verses 5, 6, and 7, where the charge is given to parents of the generation, senior parents, we might say, to pass on the truth of God to generation after generation after generation. To your adult kids, to your grandkids, perhaps to your great-grandkids. I'll never forget Crawford Loritz preaching a sermon on this passage. And he said, we as grandparents ought to pray for generations we may never see. I've thought about that for two years since I heard that message. I have no idea of the generations that will follow Vicki and me and our adult kids and our grandkids who are here now. I don't know how long we'll live, whether or not we'll see any great grandkids, but certainly there will be generations we will never see. You know, that's our mission. One of our missions in leaving a legacy is to live our lives in such a way that they will impact generations will never see. You know, that's what my great, 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 great grandparents did in Trube, Switzerland. They gave an organ. They lived their lives in such a way that 326 years later, I stood there and was impacted, and I'm impacted by their lives every day here in Dallas, 326 years later. You know, perhaps they prayed for generations they would never see. They never thought of me, but you know what? Their lives impact me to this day. You know, that's our mission, to live our lives in such a way that generations we will never see will be impacted by our lives of faith, just like the Apostle Paul. We have fought the good fight. We have completed the course, and there is laid up a treasure for us in heaven by keeping the faith in every way. That is our mission, and may God help us to live that way. Amen? Amen.